Uh, welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to look at the topic uh, radioactivity and we are going to be looking at the radioactive decay series and we will see how the radioactive decay series helps us to get um, radioactive isot or compounds that uh, form stable compounds. So they undergo radiation uh, continuously until they form stable compounds. So radioactive decay series, uh, since the unstable nuclide may decay to unstable daughter nuclide, the daughter nuclide may undergo another radiation until a stable nuclide is formed. This is what is referred to as the radioactive decay series. So for example, like in the shown diagram, this is the spontaneous radioactive decay series of uh, uranium up it forms up to lead and you can see in the first uh, step alpha particles are emitted and you see why because you see the mass number is changing by four and the atomic number is changing by two and then next is the beta particle mass number does not change but the atomic number increases by one and then next you can see the mass number does not change atomic number increases by one and then you see the mass number changes by four reduces by four and atomic number reduces by four so it's alpha particle and then next the mass number reduces by four and the atomic number reduces by two so it's an alpha particle then the mass number reduces by four again and the atomic number by four alpha particle then the mass number also reduces by four and atomic number by two alpha particle the mass number reduces by four and atomic number by two alpha and then we have a beta particle where the mass number remains the same but the atomic number increases and then another beta particle is released where the mass number is the same but the atomic number increases by one and then an alpha particle is emitted where the mass number decreases by four and the atomic number decreases by two and a beta particle where the same mass number remains but the atomic number increases by one and then a beta particle is released once more so the mass number remains the same but the atomic number increases by one and finally, an alpha particle is released where the mass number decreases by 4 and the atomic number by 2. So this is a continuous reaction. Uh, it continuously happens until it gets to a stable uh, nuclide. So we are going to look at sample of questions in regards to the radioactive decay series. So the following part of a radioactive decay series determine the values of A and B. So you notice in the first stem, there is a beta particle. So it tells you that a mass number is going to remain the same and then the atomic number is going to increase by one. And then when you look at the product, this product here is decreasing by four. This tells you that the alpha particle is being uh, emitted. So minus four to form two that is, that means the 84, we have to subtract two from 84 to give us 82. And then we also have this equation, the following equation shows part of the radioactive decay process. So we start with A that undergoes a certain radiation. So you can you notice that the mass number remains the same and the atomic number increases by one. This tells you it's the beta particle. And then after that, it undergoes an alpha decay. So it, the mass number will reduce by four. So the value of M will be 230. And then the atomic number is going to reduce by two, which will give us the value of N as 89. Radioactive polonium 216 decay as shown. So polonium is undergoing a decay to form 208 and 82 lead and then it undergoes a, a alpha decay and then a beta decay. So let's calculate the values. So we move from 216 to 208 and we have also other compounds that are being formed. So we have to remember that uh, the alpha decay is an helium and the beta decay is an electron. 
so this is what happened so we are going to add this and get uh, values known and unknown values so for us to move from 208 to 316 if it has to like retain the same value because if we undergo beta decay it means the mass number will remain the same but if it undergoes um uh, uh, alpha decay it has to reduce by four but by how many fours since it's 216 minus 208 it means that eight uh, the, the mass number has reduced by 8. This tells us these are two fours. So this means there will be two alpha particles. So that it can be 2 or 8 plus uh, 8 plus 0, which gives us 216. And then for 90, 90 to 82, that means it's 82 plus 4, which will give us um, 88. So if you add 88, so let's make a slight correction. So the atomic number of polonium 216 is actually 84. Let's make that correction. So the, I just like we had said the 208 will, we will add two times four, plus two times four get plus 28, which will give us 216. Since the beta particle is not going to change the mass number, and then the atomic number we are going to use an uh, in the atomic number we need negative one on the beta particle so it's going to be 82 then plus two times two the two uh, is on the atomic number of the uh, helium and then plus minus two so it is 82 plus uh, four which gives us 86 so for us to get 84, it means we need to subtract 2. So it means we have two molecules of the beta particle being emitted. And then we we'll look at this uh, diagram. So below is a part of a radioactive decay series of uranium-238. So it undergoes an alpha decay. So it to form to that to four ninety a beta decay to form this and then it also undergoes um another decay to form uranium two thirty nine so we are better to identify isotopes so we need the compounds that have the same mass number but different atomic number. So the ones that have the same mass number, we have um, 234, 234. Uh, it's the same atomic number, different mass number. So we have uh, different, uh, same, mass, same atomic number. It's going to be uh, uranium-92 and uranium-92 here. And then we have also this with 90-90. Different mass number is there's this compound with 234 and 30. So we have um, this component here with 234 and 90, and also thorium with 230 and 90. And then we also have uranium 238 and atomic number 2, and uranium 239 and atomic number 92. And finally, we look at this question. So below, graph below represent a radioactive decay series of isotope H. Study it and answer the question that follows. So we started with isotope H. So isotope H is going to be around here. So H has mass number of 214 and atomic number of 83. And then it forms J, which is 210 and uh, atomic number of 81 then uh, we have k uh, which is atomic number 210 mass number 83 and then we have l which is 210 and uh, atomic number 84 and then we have m which is uh, 206 and atomic number 82 what type of radiation emitted when isotope H changes to J? 
So you notice this is a helium because you can see we have reduced um, by four, there is four, then helium and then down here two. So this is uh, the radiation is alpha. Write the equation for the nuclear reaction that occurs when J changes to K. So you can see there is no change in the mass number. So it is J, we are starting with 210. 81 so it moves to form k which is 210 and 83 so it means the atomic number is increasing that tells us you have two atoms of the um of the beta particle identify a pair of isotopes so we want different uh, mass number same atomic number so we have h and k so we have h and k so that brings us to the end. I'll see you in the next lesson as we look at Half-Life.